Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss about transaction, commit and rollback in Snowflake. Okay, and these three concepts are very very important with respect to any SQL. Okay, whether you are using Oracle, MySQL or anything. Okay, any OLTP or OLTP system. If there are this kind of functionality is available, then while building any ETL pipeline, whether you are using Spark, Python, Talent, whatever ETL tool you are, you are using, there you should be keeping this concept in your mind. Okay. So before going to direct implementation of these three concepts in Snowflake, let me just give you a simple idea about this technique. Okay. That is the transaction is nothing but a sequence of SQL statements that are committed or rolled back as a unit okay so very important definition okay so suppose you are having a set of sql queries which you are executing you can execute under a particular transaction okay all of these queries you can execute under a particular transaction and if suppose all these sql queries are executed successfully then only at the end you can put a commit okay that means all these changes insert update delete whatever will be happening under this particular block will be committed otherwise what you can do you can apply rollback then what will happen if due to some reason any query suppose fails or some some system uh, issue comes then you might have to roll back and that time whatever insert update delete happen that will be basically removed and basically you will be having the situation same like when you started the transaction okay so that is nothing but commit and rollback now let me just explain you with one simple example so you just consider ATM transaction steps. Okay, suppose you want to withdraw some amount of money. What are these steps? So first step will be transaction will start. What you have to do, you have to insert the ATM card and then you have to select the language for which uh, which you are going to use for transaction process. Then you are going to select maybe saving account. Okay, then enter the amount, how much you want to withdraw. Maybe suppose 50 rupees you want to withdraw. Okay, then you will be entering your secret pin. And in the back end, what will happen first? Suppose you are having X amount in your that particular bank, the bank balance is X. So first the ATM will try to read the amount which you are having X. Okay. Now if X is greater than or equal to 50, then only the processing is possible. Otherwise, if, if if X is less than 50, that means you cannot withdraw 50 rupees, right? So what will happen if suppose X is greater than 50, then that situation you just consider, okay. That is, I am having X amount. So, first one read operation will happen. Then, here, X minus 50. It will be computing. Okay. That is, if 50 rupees I am withdrawing, the update should happen in my bank balance. That is, X minus 50 is my current balance. That will be updated or written in the database. Right. That's how it should work. And then, 50 rupees, it will be giving back to you from ATM. Right. So, you have to wait for that time while in the back end, this reading and updating is happening. And you can collect the cash and that way transaction is completed okay so this is the complete process okay now you just think like this way suppose you requested for withdrawal of 50 rupees and internally the program or something this system is going to read the amount which you are having as a bank balance in that particular account okay suppose x and then it is computing x minus 50 in the RAM and while the computation suppose something got failed due to environmental issue or some reason it got failed what will happen the whole process whatever happened till now that is if you are in this particular stage from here itself it will be rolled back till first stage and from the first stage you have to again do the same operation okay so that is the simple concept of rollback and if all these steps are successful then only at the end of the day it will be making a commit in your database also it will be getting updated okay so that is nothing but a simple idea with respect to commit and rollback now without any further delay let me switch to snowflake console and show you the implementation okay so if i refresh this particular place here currently only two databases are present so first i am creating a ramu database so first i am ex executing drop database if exists ramu and then what i will do i will create a ramu database okay and then if I refresh this particular place, we'll be having our Ramu database with information schema and public schema. This public schema we can use to basically create any tables or views or materialized view, whatever. And information schema will basically contain the metadata information, right? And now let's use this particular schema. 
and now in snowflake by default it always do auto commit okay that is whatever insert update delete you are executing then and there it will be committing against the database okay so if you want to do some experiment with transaction processing then you have to first execute this query alter session set auto commit equal to false once i execute that see statement executed successfully now what will happen that as soon as we are executing some insert update or delete kind of queries dml queries against the database table if we are executing that inside a particular transaction in a session then we will have to commit to reflect the changes or else we can roll back okay so first what we are doing we are starting a transaction start transaction name demo1 so demo1 any, any name you can give here not an issue okay so i am starting the transaction see it is started and now if i execute show transaction you will be seeing this is the id unique identifier for the transaction okay now here what i am doing i am creating a table employee history okay employee id employee joining date department salary and manager id just simple table dummy data i will be inserting just for demo purpose so if i refresh this particular page here you will be seeing under public schema in the ramu database employee history table is created and as you can see a total number of rows are zero currently okay now basically we are going to insert some amount of data in this employee history table okay so let's execute that and see number of rows inserted is 8 okay but point to be noted this insert we are doing where we are doing under this particular demo one transaction okay so until we do commit or roll back something the final result we cannot see like for example if i just execute see let's start from employee history we will be seeing perfectly 8 rows whatever we inserted are available here in the result set right but if i refresh this particular place and then go to public scheme and then go to employee history still you will be able to see only zero rows in this employee history table why because we have not committed the transaction okay that's why it is not reflecting here okay although you are getting here because you are inside this transaction only what you created demo one okay right now to make a permanent change you can execute commit okay so see statement executed successfully now if i refresh this particular place here in the public schema in employee history see rows are there and there are total eight rows okay now if i execute select start from employee history you will be seeing perfectly eight records this is permanent change happened okay now if i execute show transaction earlier we executed here also show transaction when transaction was open that is when we have not executed any commit or rollback kind of thing just we created the transaction or we started the transaction then we were able to see some unique identifier but now we have already made commit so now we are not able to see any transaction available in the current session okay right so i hope the commit concept is clear to you so basically using commit under a transaction block whatever insert update delete you will be doing that will be saving as permanent change okay now i am starting another transaction having the name demo2 if i just do show transactions you will be seeing demo2 one unique identifier and name is demo2 now here i am creating another table employee history demo2 okay so here i will execute that and if i refresh this particular place here in the public schema see employee history demo2 is there only zero rows are there currently okay now here i am executing insert query some dummy data i am inserting and all these course whatever sql queries i am executing i'll be providing in the description box or in the comment section so that you can take that and use in your account just for uh, poc purpose or something so that you can get a feeling out of it okay so now when I executed this insert query, you will be able to see number of rows in inserted is 8, right? Now here if I execute select start from employee history demo 2, I am able to get the 8 records in the result set. But if I refresh this and then go to this particular employee history demo 2, still we are able to see only 0 rows because we have not done commit, okay? But suppose some some mistake we did or due to some system issue, something happened and some steps executed wrongly and we want to avoid this insert, then what you can do, you can execute rollback. Okay. Now if I execute rollback, see statement executed successfully. And now if I do select star from employee history demo 2, you will able to see zero records only. Basically, all those inserts are now invalid. And here also you are able to see zero rows only. Right. 
So that is the concept of rollback. That is, it, it will basically revert back all the insert, update, delete, whatever you did under a particular transaction. Before the transaction, whatever state was there, to that state only it will be taking back. But point to be noted, see here, this table we created under the demo to transaction only. But this, after doing rollback, this demo to is not going away. Okay. So remember this, if you are executing some DDL like create table or something, that you cannot roll back, although you are executing under a particular transaction. Okay, right, that is the concept. And now also if I do show transaction, I will be having no transaction because we already did roll back. Okay, otherwise we could get one unique identifier with the transaction name, whatever we created. And at the end of the session to clean up the environment, you can do alter session set auto commit equal to true, which is the default behavior of Snowflake. All after all insert update delete, it will be auto committing. Okay, so I reverted back all the changes what I did, and for safe side to avoid the unnecessary cost, you can again execute drop database if exists random. So all the tables and database whatever we created for experiment purpose are now dropped. Okay. And that is the simple concept of our transaction. You can do the same kind of activity in Python as well. So I'll be providing a link in the description box where you can go and explore much more about the transaction control in Snowflake. I hope this particular video has given you some idea, some intuition about transaction control. This is all for my this video. If you find this video helpful, then please like, share and comment. Subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos. Thank you.